Okay, so to get started adding security to all of our server's endpoints, we're gonna need to start off by installing something called Firebase Admin. Now, Firebase Admin is basically a package that's a lot like the one we've been using for the front end, right? Just the regular Firebase package, except Firebase Admin, as the name would suggest, has admin level privileges. So in other words, since Firebase Admin is gonna be used on the server, right? and the code that we're gonna run on the server obviously isn't under the control of any of our users like front-end code is. Because of that, we can allow our server to do things that require a lot more privileges. Now, one of these things, and this is gonna be by far the most important function that you'll learn in this section, one of these things that it allows us to do is actually verify the auth tokens that the front-end is sending. So, essentially, Right, the front end generates the auth token usually by calling, you know, user dot get ID token, as we saw, ID token, and it then sends that token to the server. Now, what we're gonna do in all of our server endpoints is basically take that token and verify it, and that will tell us two things. The first thing that'll tell us is, is this a valid token, right? is the token valid? If it's not, then chances are someone's trying to tamper with our site, right? Someone's just trying to get at things they shouldn't. So, you know, that's the first thing it'll tell us is whether or not it's a valid token. The second thing it'll tell us is who actually sent the request, right? Because the Firebase token contains data about the user, when we validate it on the server, we'll actually be able to see the information about the user that sent the token. Now that will allow us to do things like make sure that users can only access their own information. So in other words, if user ABC, right, that's this user right here, if user ABC tries to send a request to the server uh, to fetch user, uh, let's see, user 123's information, the server's gonna see because of the auth token that it's user ABC trying to access user 123's information and it's going to not allow that to happen. So that's essentially what's gonna be going on here in our endpoints. And in order to actually get started with this, we're gonna to need to install the Firebase admin package into our server. So let's do that. We're gonna open up our backend. You're gonna to want to open up a terminal in the backend, which I have right here. And we're going to install the Firebase admin package by saying npm install firebase-admin. And we're gonna hit enter, and that will install that package for us. Now, while that's installing, in order for the Firebase admin package to work correctly, we need to add some credentials to our server, right? In order for the Firebase admin package to do the dangerous things that it does, or that it has the capability of doing, we need to make sure that it has some secret credentials, right? Secret keys, which will let Firebase Auth know that that's actually our server. So in order to get these credentials, what we're gonna need to do is go over to the Firebase console. And essentially what we're gonna do here is up in the top left-hand corner, you're gonna click on this little gear and go to users and permissions. And in order to generate our credentials, we're gonna go to service accounts, and when you see this little thing pop up here, we're gonna click on this button that says generate new private key. Now what that does, what this generate new private key thing does is it'll download those credentials to our machine. And then we just have to basically copy and paste those into our backend directory. So once that's downloaded, I'm just going to copy and paste that from the downloads folder into the backend. I'm just doing that in another monitor here because it is very sensitive information, so I don't wanna risk recording it here. And once I've done that, let's go back to our backend and we should see this React Firebase Auth blah, 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 dot JSON thing show up. I'm going to rename this to credentials just to make it easier to work with here. So credentials.json. And if you wanna open that up and take a look at it, I'm not gonna do that here because again, it's you know secret information. So you'll wanna be careful with this file. And speaking of which, let's actually add this to our git ignore so that we don't end up committing it by accident. We're just gonna say credentials.json. And you should see that 
uh, turn a darker shade of gray there, which means that it won't be committed with the rest of the files. That's very important that you do that. And in fact, GitHub will even uh, send you an email if you accidentally commit one of these, telling you that your credentials have been potentially compromised. All right, so now that we have those credentials, what we need to do is we need to modify our server.js file and we need to have it set up Firebase Admin and pass it those credentials. So what that's gonna look like is we're gonna say import all as admin from Firebase Admin. That's the package we installed earlier. And then below that, we're gonna say import credentials from dot dot slash credentials dot JSON, right? That's our uh, credentials file that we just added to our project. And then all we need to do to set up Firebase Admin with those credentials is say admin dot initialize app. And inside a configuration object here, we're just gonna say credential admin dot credential dot cert. And we're gonna pass those credentials uh, to it as an argument. Okay, and that's all we really need to do to get that set up. So what we should be able to do now is actually use this admin package to do things like verify users ID tokens. Now, remember that we're already uh, sending those tokens along with the requests we're making. For example, if we open up our homepage, let's say, we can see that we're already getting the auth token and sending it along in the request headers. So what we need to do now is we need to modify each of these endpoints so that it will actually get that request header, right? It'll get the auth token out of the request header and use it to actually make sure that the user who's trying to access this, uh, this user's information is that user. Now, the way that we're gonna do that, and I'm just gonna start off with the uh, get endpoint here. The way that we're gonna do that is by saying const auth token equals request.headers. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the admin package to verify that this is a good auth token, right? Making sure that it hasn't been tampered with essentially. So to do that, we're gonna say await admin.auth.verify ID token. And we just need to pass the auth token to that as an argument. Okay, and basically what this will do, as I said, is make sure that this auth token is valid. If it's not, it will throw an error. So generally what we wanna do is put this inside a try catch block. And if it fails, we send back a status code indicating that the auth token wasn't valid. So the status code that we usually use for that is 401. So in that case, we would just say return response dot send status. 401, and that would be all we need to do. So the other thing that I mentioned, right, the first responsibility of this verify ID token is to, as the name would suggest, verify the ID token. But what it actually does for us is it gets the corresponding user for that auth token. And we can get that by saying const, uh, we'll just say auth user to distinguish it from the user that we're getting down here, right, the user's info that we're getting down here. And then once we have this auth user, the next thing that we need to do is make sure that that user is the user whose ID is up here in this URL. So the way we're gonna do that is once we've gotten the auth user, we're gonna say if auth user dot UID is not equal to the user ID up in the request parameters. Okay, and actually we need to put this stuff up above there. There we go. If that's not the case, then we wanna send back a status code telling the user that they're not allowed to access that resource. Now the status code for this is generally 403, so we'll just say return response.send status 403. And that's all we really need to do there. Everything else should work just as before, right? We still wanna send back a 404 if that resource doesn't exist. And we wanna send back the user if everything goes. So that's the basic process for verifying an ID token inside an endpoint. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually run this thing and show that it does its job. So let's run our application here now by saying npm run start, or npm run dev rather, npm run dev. 
And oops, it looks like we made a mistake here. Ah, we need to add async since we added await to our admin.auth.verifyid token function. And sure enough, we should see server is listening on port 8080. So first of all, let's make sure that our front end uh, is still able to load data as before, since under normal circumstances, everything should still work just like it did before. So let's log in as Sean at uh, gmail.com, abc123, log in. And sure enough, we see that we're able to load data successfully from the server as this user. Now, on the other hand, let's say that we were to try and load a different user, you know, just from the browser URL like this. Well, what we'll see is gonna happen, okay, let's, uh, let's actually get the same user that we just loaded here. So we're gonna try and load this user's ID from outside our app. If we hit enter here, we'll see that we get this 403 unauthorized code. Okay, I believe it's a 403. You can actually see the exact status code here if you go into uh, network, and you may need to hit refresh here. Ah, here we wanna go to all. Ah, it's a 401 here because we didn't include any kind of auth token in the header, right? Because we're just typing it into a browser. Now, if you wanna test this using something like Postman and actually try including a, uh, you know, a different auth token for a different user, feel free to do that, but I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. So anyway, those are the basics of making sure that users can only access their own data using ID tokens. And again, I just wanna really re-emphasize the importance of what we've learned how to do here. Basically, without the stuff that we just did, most modern websites wouldn't be able to function correctly, right? They wouldn't be remotely secure. So with what we've seen here, we're able to make sure that users are only able to access and modify their own data. And this has some pretty big implications and applications for sites that require levels of security, right? In most sites, generally speaking, you'll want to make sure that users can only access their own data. So I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.